Hello everyone, welcome to IPM IAS Academy's daily news highlights. Today is 24th July 2024. So let us try to understand the important news for today's discussion. Budget 2024 is the most important discussion topic for uh, the today's newspaper. So if you look at today's newspaper, first four or five pages of the newspaper is actually filled with details regarding the budget priorities. Okay, so let us try to understand the budget priorities here and we will be doing an exclusive video on the budget features so that you will understand each and every aspect regarding the budget in that particular video so that we can skip the main news regarding the budget in today's newspaper and we can uh, go for the other news. So here uh, an overall idea of the budget I will be able to give. So regarding the budget priorities, if you look at the budget priorities, nine areas are actually selected for the budget uh, focus one is productivity and resilience in agriculture so agriculture becomes an important area here then employment and skilling okay one of the crucial area that they are actually highlighting is the employment and skilling then inclusive human resource development and social justice manufacturing and services urban development energy security infrastructure innovation research and development and next generation reforms so these are the important areas that the uh, budget is actually focusing on and in all these areas they are coming up with some features some provisions some schemes etc so all those things we will be able to discuss in that particular video that exclusive video for budget so in this uh, analysis session what you can understand is the priority areas of uh, the budget for 2024 and these are the nine priority areas of budget 2024 the rest of the details we will be discussing in the uh, video on budget 2024 nepal sri lanka and Seychelles secure more funds under budget allocation for mea ministry of external affairs so this particular news is actually coming in page number 13 general studies 3 indian economy and it is also a part of international relations the India funded projects in the neighborhood received a bulk of the allocation for the Ministry of External Affairs. So what happened? Actually, three countries, mainly Nepal, Sri Lanka and Seychelles, in their case, the fund allocation has actually increased. Nepal secured an allocation of 700 crore, which is a jump of 150 crore. Okay, And Sri Lanka received 245 crore, an improvement of 95 crore. And Seychelles, which had an allocation of 10 crore last year, got a boost with the infusion of 30 crore. So we can see that towards these countries, the fund allocation has been increased. But on the other hand, we can see a dip in the fund allocation in relation to some other countries. So Bhutan, the largest recipient of the annual allocation under MEA, has seen a dip in funding by 332 crore. Total funding for Bhutan this year stands at 2068 crore but effectively our relation our bilateral relation with the Bhutan has actually increased the the projects that we are actually engaging the number of projects have actually increased so we cannot say that effectively the the funding has been reduced because our engagements is actually more with Bhutan and regarding the funding related to Myanmar Mauritius Bangladesh and Mongolia we can see a dip the conflict on Myanmar, which had an allocation of 400 crore last year, received only 250 crore this year. Mauritius, with an allocation of 370 crore, has received only, only 90 crores. And the allocation for Mongolia, which earlier received 7 crore, has been scaled down to 5 crore. Allocation for Bangladesh has dropped by 80 crore to 120 crore. Both Afghanistan and Maldives with 200 crore and 400 crore respectively have secured the same allocation as last year. So we can see that on the one hand, there is an improvement in the allocation of funds to certain nations, Nepal, Sri Lanka and Seychelles. On the other hand, there is a dip in the allocation of funds to some other nations that is uh, Myanmar, Bangladesh, uh, Mauritius, Mongolia, etc. So you can read about these uh, uh, these details and also try to check our bilateral relations with these countries, especially Nepal, Sri Lanka and Seychelles. Try to understand our bilateral relations with these countries. New UK Foreign Secretary David Lamy arrives today. 
In the first high-level visit by the newly elected Labour government in the United Kingdom, UK Foreign Secretary David Lamy will arrive on Wednesday morning for a day-long visit, where a full reset of ties and economic, domestic and global security will be at the top of the agenda British Foreign Office announced. So basically, the objective of this visit is the, to to reset the uh, the ties on economic, domestic and global security. Lamy has mentioned that I am traveling to India in my first month as foreign secretary because resetting our relationship with the global south key part of how this government will reconnect Britain for our security and prosperity at home. So he has clearly mentioned this. So there is an agenda behind this particular visit he wanted to improve the relationship with the global south and he also mentioned about india as the as the emerging superpower of the 21st century one of the fastest growing economies with the world's largest population so very important to understand how the other nations are actually looking at india and its growth he is expected to put reviving india uk free trade agreement india uk free trade agreement talks for an early conclusion at the top of his agenda and will also discuss the next steps in this strategic partnership. So, so there is certain reason behind this particular visit. One is to improve the ties between both these countries. Okay, and another important area is to revive the India UK free trade agreement. The free trade agreement discussions were actually put on hold because of the general elections happening in both the countries. So to revive that particular discussions, they, they actually came to India. They are actually approaching India. So read this article and try to understand the agenda behind this particular visit and also try to do a background study about our relationship with United Kingdom. As both the countries have recently witnessed the election, so we can expect a change in our bilateral relations in the upcoming years. So please do visit and understand what is the present uh, relation between uh, India and United Kingdom. This particular news is actually coming in page number 13, General Studies 2 and which is an important aspect of international relations. Drug used to treat clothes can protect against cobra venom damage. So this is an interesting and an important news. Why? Because it is coming under science and technology. It is a new information in the science and technology field. And researchers found tinzaparin, a drug commonly used to prevent blood clothes, significantly reduce damage to human cells caused by the spitting cobra venom. The team also found the drug reduced skin damage in the mice injected with the venom. The scientists have filed for a patent and may start human clinical trials soon. So this is a, an important discovery from the perspective of science. So what, what we can actually understand is the it is actually a treatment against the cobra venom. So try, try reading about this article and try to understand more about this particular information right? because the venomous snakes kill about 1.4 lakh people every year. So that is a very uh, important uh, problem of concern. Okay, So we need to have a solution for this. So this is a solution they are actually coming up with. So read about it and what is the intensity of this particular issue in our country and how it is actually contributing to the science and technology field. All those things try to have an idea about it and this uh, article clearly covers all these things. So read this article very carefully and make your own notes. This is coming in page number 15, General Studies 3, Science and Technology. Blinken Wang Yi to meet at ASEAN that will discuss Myanmar, South China Sea. The Southeast Asian foreign ministers gather at Laos this week for talks on the disputed South China Sea and the conflict in Myanmar, with top diplomats from China and the United States state slated to meet on the sidelines. The three-day meeting on the 10-member Association of Southeast Asian Nations starts in the capital on Thursday. So it's very important to understand that ASEAN is a 10-member organization. ASEAN means Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Anthony Blinken will meet Chinese counterpart Wang Yi on the sidelines of the event at which he will discuss the importance of adherence to international law in the South China Sea. So we, yesterday also we discussed about South China Sea. It's actually a disputed area in the Southeast Asian region. To find a solution uh, which is actually in alignment with the international law is really really required in this particular area.
Another important agenda for this particular meeting is the civil war which is actually going on in Myanmar. ASEAN of which Myanmar is a member had led diplomatic efforts to resolve the crisis but has made little progress. So they have done their part. They tried to resolve this particular issue but it, it was not fruitful. The junta is excluding from the bloc's top level meetings over its refusal to negotiate with its opponents and its brutal crackdown on dissent. The crisis has divided the bloc with Indonesia, Malaysia and Philippines calling for a tougher action against the military junta. Thailand has held its own bilateral talks with the generals as well as detained democracy leader Aung San Suu Kyi. So, when Myanmar is actually affected, when Myanmar is in crisis, we can see that the other Southeast Asian nations is also worried about its situation. That is the reason why in the association itself, they are actually putting this as a, an important problem of concern. And individually, these countries are trying to approach the military junta and the uh, democratic leaders to resolve this particular issue in Myanmar. So, read this article and try to understand about the problems that are actually going on in Myanmar and get a small idea about what is this organization ASEAN and what are the important countries, the 10 countries in ASEAN, try to get an understanding about it. And this news comes under page number 17, General Studies 2, International Relations. Hamas and Fatah signed declaration in Beijing on ending rift amid Gaza war. Very important. Why? Because we know that Palestine-Israel crisis is actually going on and in Palestine itself there are certain uh, differences going on. So, in order to sort out these differences, actually China is playing a bigger role. The 14 Palestinian factions agree on the declaration to end division and strengthen national unity. The groups also express commitment to to the creation of Palestinian state on the lands Israel captured in 1967 war. The Palestinian factions Hamas and Fatah signed a declaration in Beijing on ending the years-long rift, the group said on Tuesday, taking a step toward resolving a deep divide which has lingered for years despite repeated attempts at unifying the sites. The two heavyweights of Palestinian politics signed the Beijing declaration on ending division and strengthening the Palestinian unity because when the the, the country is actually fighting against uh, Israel. The unity in that country, that, that place is really, really important. So, they are actually trying to uh, reinstate that. The Gaza's post-war future remains in doubt. Israel vehemently opposes any Hamas role in governing Gaza after the war. It has also rejected the calls from US for the Fatah-dominated Palestinian Authority to run Gaza after the fighting ends. So, Israel has taken a very strict stand against the, uh, the Palestinian factions. The two rival Palestinian groups along with 12 other political factions met Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi concluding talks that started on Sunday according to a post that, that, that was there on social media platform Weibo from Chinese TV network CGTN. Okay, so what it indicates? It indicates that the role of China in the international affairs is actually increasing. China's growing importance and significance in the international arena is actually increasing. The agreement also underscores the China's growing role in West Asian diplomacy with success in the restoration of relations between Saudi Arabia and Iran. So, their presence is there in West Asia. They have a bigger role to play in West Asia. A joint statement issued after the most recent talks in Beijing gave no details on how or when the government would be formed, saying only that it would be done by agreement among the factions. According to the joint statement, the two groups are committed to creation of Palestinian state on lands Israel captured in 1967 war and its Arab neighborhoods. From this particular article, what we can understand is Palestinian politics you can understand how the different factions are actually working in Palestine and how they are jointly organizing to fight against Israel to stand for their country and what is the role of China in this particular issue because China has already proved its presence in West Asian region that is the reason why they are getting more influence in this particular region. So, these are all important why because this is something happening in international relations and apart from that the growing influence of China is always a point of concern for India. 
okay so these things you need to understand and this particular news is actually coming in page number 17 general studies to international relations russia china pushed back after us arctic strategy flags military cooperation the russia and china on tuesday pushed back against us warning over their increasing military and economic cooperation in the arctic where climate change is opening up greater competition russia has in recent years beefed up its military presence in the arctic by reopening and modernizing several bases and airfields abandoned since the end of the soviet era and china is actually supporting this particular course and they are also doing joint exercises in in various areas also there is also growing military cooperation with russia and china conducting joint exercises of the coast of alaska so a cooperation between these countries is actually growing and that is an alarming call for the uh, united states because united states is having opposition or uh, its own differences between both these countries okay russia and china they have their own opposition so when these countries come together there is always a threat for united states that is the reason why they are actually going against uh, russia and chinese um, cooperation Moscow is heavily promoting its northern sea route an alternative cargo route for vessels traveling between Europe and Asia China and Russia both defend their policies in the region Beijing said that it acts on the principles of respect cooperation mutual wins and sustainability so this is actually the um, the, the the response from the russian and the chinese side why they are actually increasing their involvement in the arctic region russia also mentions that it does its part to ensure that the arctic does not become a territory of discord and tension and with the cooperation of china the uh, they contributes to, to an atmosphere of stability and predictability in the region in the arctic and their actions were not targeted against other countries so whatever cooperation which is actually happening between china and russia in the arctic region it is not against any other region but to maintain a stability in that particular region in the in, in the perspective of us they say that the increases in human activity will elevate the risk of accidents miscalculation and environmental degradation in the region and us forces must be ready and must be equipped to mitigate the risk associated with the potential contingencies in the arctic region so uh, if when you read this particular news on the one hand you can see the ongoing uh, cooperation between russia and china is a threat for uh, united states and you can also understand the importance of the arctic re arctic region and uh, from the perspective of climate change how this region is actually relevant and then on the other hand you can also see the uh, the the response of united states towards this cooperation and also their presence in the arctic region so i hope this uh, video was helpful for you and if it is actually helpful for you please like share and subscribe to our channel and do share it with your friends so that they will get more important information regarding the civil service preparation and uh, current affairs like i have already mentioned uh, an, an exclusive video on budget 2024 will be uploaded in the channel so please stay tuned